Hello, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. No? Hi, Yancy. How are you today? You're I'm fine? Tired. Oh, you're tired. You have been working. What is that? I study the whole day. I was oh. thinking of this the whole day. <laughs> now, I guess it's like uh, time for midterms, right? It's como temporada de, de parciales, o no? Aún no? Um, bachillerato. Ah, es bachillerato. Oh. <laughs> no, entonces todavía no es temporada de examen. No, <laughs> ok, uh, veamos quién me escribió por acá. Jamie. Mm -hmm. Ah, ok, está bien. Gracias por informar, este Jamie. Ok, uh, Silvia, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo ha estado? How are you today? You're fine? So, so or tired? Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening. Um, so tired. Tired. You have been working. Do you work or do you study? Nothing. Do you work, work or study? Trabaja o estudia? Ah, <laughs> trabajo. Trabaja. Oh, I work, work? In, I work in, in the factory. Oh, in a factory. Oh, mm -hmm. good, good. Okay, okay. Um, if you remember, uh, we're going to start with uh, the class that correspond for today. Uh, I mean, for tonight. Um, if you remember, yesterday we were just discussing uh, some things about the simple present and past, and simple past also. And uh, we couldn't see like um, the information that we have on a platform because um, I don't know what happened yesterday, but it, it was not possible. It wasn't possible to to see um, those cuts. But today, so I guess it's working because I have it here in, in my computer. Just let me share my screen uh, right now. So here we have. Okay, uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be uh, working on this. Let me just show the first lesson of yet. So because we're discussing about it, the the uh, simple uh, present, simple past, and also we're going to talk about simple future. The first lesson of yet it says, uh, in this class you will be exposed to an audio where examples of past, present, and future tenses are used. Uh, we what we're going to do here is just to listen to the conversation. So we're gonna see. Um, this video, and then we are going to move to discuss um, all the things that we need to discuss for uh, these topics. Um, the topic for this um, conversation is this neighborhood has changed. Okay, let's see how, how does it work. Um, let me just play this video. I'm also show the audio here. Let me share the audio. And okay, there we have. Please pay attention to this. After this video, we're going to um, discuss all Malls and parking lots. That's because everyone has a car. 50 years ago, people walked everywhere. Nowadays, they drive. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What else has changed in their neighborhood? Well, what about that old bookstore? Do you know if it's still there? No, it's not. Now it's a pizzeria. Really? Let's go check it out. All this talk about change is making me hungry. Did you get the tenses? Did you notice how they used simple past along with present and future? Stay with us so you can learn to do the same. Hello and welcome back. We're I guess we're going to start from the beginning because like, we couldn't see like um, the complete video. Uh, let's let's just start from this part, okay? See, from the beginning. Pay attention. We're about to listen to different tenses in a single conversation. Pay attention and try to identify the tenses they are using. This neighborhood has changed. Part A. Listen and practice. This neighborhood sure has changed. I know. A few years ago, not many people lived here. 
but the population is growing so fast these days. Yeah, it seems like there's a construction site on every corner. Remember how we used to buy candy at that little grocery store? Now it's a multiplex cinema. Yeah, and they're tearing down our high school. They're going to build a shopping mall. Soon there will be just malls and parking lots. That's because everyone has a car. Fifty years ago, people walked everywhere. Nowadays, they drive. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What else has changed in their neighborhood? Well, what about that old bookstore? Do you know if it's still there? No, it's not. Now it's a pizzeria. Really? Let's go check it out. All this talk about change is making me hungry. Did you get the text? Okay, well, we want to stop there if we want to use that question. Uh, the last one uh, that we have here. We're going to modify a little bit uh, to ask you the following. What um, has changed in your neighborhood? Okay, that's going to be um, the questions that uh, we're going to use for this activity. What has changed in your neighborhood? Uh, let me write it down here. Uh, give me just one. Let me share the uh, what This one, this one, and also this one. Okay. What has changed in your neighborhood? Neighborhood. Okay. Oh, first of all. Okay. Mm. Okay. Neighborhood. Okay, so what we have. Guess it's not possible to do it bigger. Probably it is. Let me just verify. Is it possible? No. No. Okay, it's not possible to mm, to make it bigger. Um, let me try this. Okay, then we have the question, what has changed in your neighborhood? I'm gonna be asking you, um, you're gonna tell me uh, some things that probably has changed since you get born in, in your neighborhood. Um, vamos a ver, vamos, vamos a hacer una, una pequeña actividad, es bastante sencilla. Vamos a utilizar esta pregunta. Yo, yo les voy a hacer la pregunta, ¿qué ha cambiado en, este, su, 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 en su vecindario? Eh, desde que ustedes, pues, son pequeños desde que ustedes estaban pequeños ahora, ¿qué es lo que ha cambiado? por ejemplo, Silvia um, en su vecindario um, what has changed in your neighborhood? What, what things do you see different? ¿qué cosas ve diferente? go back to, to, to go back to the past and, and try to remember something that probably you, um, at that moment, you didn't find. Algo que en ese momento usted pues no, no haya este, encontrado en el pasado, ¿verdad? Algo que, que ahora, pues, hoy en día, sí lo tiene en su, en su vecindario. So, tell me. Um, water? Uh -huh. Pues eso, antes no había agua. <laughs> water? Okay, but the, the, in, in the constructions, okay, buildings keep the same, the same buildings. Los mismos edificios, algún edificio que, que este, eh, hoy tengamos por ahí, alguna casa nueva, un parque nuevo, una cancha nueva. Mm, supermarket. Ah, supermarket, okay, good. So you have a supermarket there. Uh, in, in your case, um, Andrea, uh, Jancy Andrea? Yes, well... What has changed in your neighborhood? My neighbors will have an uh, improve mm -hmm. he, their houses. Oh, their houses. houses. And and they they build more a, teams. Yes. And there is... A, now there is a poly... ¿Cómo se dice? Polideportivo. Poly. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna say sporting place. Ah, sporting place. Um, only that, I think. Just, just that. Uh, in many, 
no sé cómo se dice, pasajes. Pasajes, like passages. You mean uh -huh. like, uh, like roads? Something like that? ¿Cómo? Roads, like como calles, pasajes. Ajá, uh -huh. yes. Okay, roads. Okay, okay, good. Um, Suleima, what about you? What has changed in your neighborhood? Do you have something new there? Since you remember. Um, the, the walls. Okay. Walls. La, la calle arregladas. <laughs> okay. New roads. New roads. New streets. New streets or new roads. So what else? Just that. You don't have like um, uh, a supermarket, something like that. I don't know, a store. Alumbrado. Oh, okay. They 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 have like um, lights for nights. Lights okay. for nights. Okay, I get that. Okay, good. Um, Sandra, what about you? In my neighborhood, there are more inhabitants. Oh, mm -hmm. what else? Um, have repaired the streets. Oh, okay, good. What else? Just that. <laughs> okay. Just that. Okay, let, let, let's listen to Fernando. Fernando, what about you? Um, what has changed in your neighborhood? You had something new there since you remember? Uh, in my neighborhood, uh, how do you say? Remodelando una escuela. Okay, um, when I say like um, rebuilding school. Rebuilding a school uh, in my neighborhood. There are a mall. Oh, okay. Plaza Mundo, Plaza Mundo Popa. Oh, okay, good. So you have a new one there. Good, yeah, excellent. It's new, it's new because uh, in my childhood, this mall don't stay. Okay, it didn't exist at that moment. Yes, this, oh, this mall okay. created, uh, I think, in uh, 2020. It's it's new we yes it's new we because just uh three years and um, has passed since uh they built it there okay it's new we okay so good um we're gonna uh check now contents that we have on the platform we're gonna be uh, discussing a little bit let me just stop sharing here um okay we're gonna share these two these and this. Okay, we're gonna be working as I said before in this part. Um, let me just move this here. No, it's not. Now. Let me just minimize this. I'm gonna move here. Okay, so here we have, this is the lesson objective. Uh, we're going to see uh, some different things about the uses of uh, past, present, and future. We're gonna focus here mostly in contrast uh, the events. Um, uh, the lesson I've yet it says that at the end of this class, you will be able to describe events using time contrast between the past, present, and future. Um, let's let's see how does it work at first and how we can contrast information, in this case events, um, in English. Pay attention to this video, then we're going to extend the um, explanation. Uh, okay, here we have. Hello everyone, before you watch our video, we want you to write on our discussion box expressions that you already know, which are used in the past, present, and future. Time contrasts. Past. A few years ago, not many people lived here. Present. These days, the population is growing so fast. Future. Soon, there will be a lot of shopping malls. People used to shop at grocery stores. Today, people shop at supermarkets. In 20 years, 
People might buy groceries by computer. Fifty years ago, people walked everywhere. Nowadays, people drive their cars instead. In the future, people are going to use cars even more. We noticed you wrote some time expressions related to past, present, and future. Well done. Now let's talk a bit about time contrast. This helps us to talk about perhaps a same situation that we have lived over the years and we want to make reference since it happened, taking it to our present and imagining it in a future. The trick here is for us to use the verbs properly in its right tense along with time expressions. Let's go over the chart. In the first column we talk about past and we use time expressions like a few years ago or people used to or 50 years ago and our verbs are in past. We used lived and walked. Let's move on to the present and here we use these days, today or nowadays and of course our verbs are is growing, shop and drive which are in the present. Last but not least we have our future using expressions such as soon, in 20 years, in the future. Therefore we use verbs in future, will be, might buy, are going to use. Time contrast is easy to use, just double check on your verbs. Think about it as one sentence per tense. We will now give you more time expressions that you may use with each tense. Past expressions. At that time, in the past, then. Present expressions. Currently, in the meantime, now. Future expressions. In the next couple of years, next in the near future. Now we want you to write a short description about how has your life changed using the expressions below. Make sure you do it and present it to your teacher to make sure you did it right. Okay, um, <laughs> then we have some um, has your life changed? Okay, look at this. Um, then we have some expressions that we probably could use in um, the ex exercise that we did uh, some minutes ago. For instance, um, if I ask you again, uh, what is, has changed um, there in your neighborhood? Um, you can say expressions like, um, as a child, like in Spanish, when, cuando está pequeño, cuando era este, un niño, ¿sí? uh, five years ago, si queremos ser como bien específico, cinco años atrás, no days, que se utiliza para el presente hoy en día, um, se, se traduce hoy en día, next year, que se utiliza para futuro, expresando este, pues, eh, la, la, el tiempo específico en el futuro. En este caso, next year means el siguiente año. ¿sí? But, but even though we can use like um, in about two years, in about three years, en, alrededor de, pues, en, en, dentro de eh, dos años, dentro de tres años. ¿sí? Nosotros también podemos utilizar ese tipo de expresiones. Aparte del, del, del que ya tenemos aquí, el next year. Um, in five years, in 10 years, that's another way to say that uh, we're gonna do something uh, at that time. Um, estas expresiones, pues, si ustedes observan, se utilizan bastantes para eh, expresar ideas, ya sea en presente, pasado y futuro. Ahora, cuando nosotros hablamos en pasado, eh, utiliza, utilizamos verbos en pasados. Generalmente, bueno, el día de ayer discutíamos sobre los tipos de verbos que teníamos. Eh, si tenemos un verbo regular, pues escribimos un verbo regular. Si tenemos un verbo irregular, pues eh, el, simplemente debemos asegurarnos de que ese verbo eh, sea o esté escrito correctamente. Ya que este, los verbos irregulares no se escriben o no tienen una regla específica para, para transformarlos a pasado. Ahora, um, Aquí al principio teníamos una serie de oraciones que me gustaría que regresáramos y estudiáramos. Um, we have some expressions like a few years ago, like not many people, and we use, we use, um, we use uh, the verb in past. Okay, just, just let me check here uh, some things in my computer. I need to plug in my computer because I don't have enough church. Can you give me just one minute? Yes. Okay, thank you.
Okay, guess it's working now. Um, okay, so we're discussing about the, the, the simple past, right? Well, well, not the simple past at all, just the sentences that we construct in, in past. Um, as I told you before, it's easy, well, in case of, of, of regular words to write it down there because all words in, in regular words ends in ed. So it's gonna be easy for us to create them. Um, now uh, that we know the, the, the expressions in English, like a few years ago, or uh, people used to, or five, uh, 50 years ago, or if we want to specify something like uh, yesterday, or uh, the last month, okay, the last uh, few days, expressions like that, the, the ones that we use for start um, with a sentence or so expressions that, that we use for um, indicate something that has occurred in the past is gonna start in that way. And it's gonna be creating that way too because we're going to use like the structures of simple past. Um, in el caso del, del pasado simple, pues, eh, simplemente well, las expresiones que estamos utilizando nosotros aquí, nos permiten a nosotros crear pues, una idea de lo que vamos a hablar y de la oración que vamos a utilizar. Si yo inicio mi oración con eh, hace cinco años, inmediatamente ustedes van, se van a dar por entendidos de que la oración que yo voy a estructurar después de esa expresión iría en presente, pasado, futuro. Pasado. En pasado, correcto. En pasado. Entonces, mi estructura, mi oración, la que yo voy a construir, debe tener todos los elementos para que pueda dar a entender mi idea de lo que ocurrió hace cinco años, hace tres años, el día de ayer, el mes pasado, ¿sí? O X evento que nosotros, al que nosotros queramos hacer referencia. En mi infancia, podemos decir, Uh, ah, ya estoy dando o estoy indicando de que voy a hablar sobre un evento que ocurrió en mi infancia, lo cual indica que fue en el pasado. Entonces, mi oración debe ir construida de esa, de, de esa manera. Sujeto, verbo en pasado más el complemento. Si sí, vamos a utilizar nosotros el, el pasado simple. Ahora, en el presente tenemos uh, por aquí dos opciones. Ya, al día de ayer veíamos el presente simple únicamente. Teníamos dos categorías en el presente simple, uno que era con los verbos, eh, con todos los verbos, y otra eh, en la que nosotros hacíamos uso del verbo to be, ¿sí? Entonces, se pueden manejar ambas. Ahora, también vamos a incluir en el presente, cuando nosotros queremos hablar de acciones que están ocurriendo en ese momento, podemos utilizar eh, la estructura eh, gramatical, en este caso le, le, la oración, el tiempo en presente continuo, porque es fácil utilizar el presente continuo, porque es utilizar el verbo to be más un verbo principal en ing ¿sí? un, un verbo continuo, como se les conoce, los verbos continuos, ya, ya conocen los verbos continuos ustedes, ¿cuáles son los verbos continuos? Yes, who am in ing Ah, the ones that end in ing. Yes, th those are the verbs that we're going to use um, in this kind of in this kind of sentences. But uh, just take a look of the expressions that we're going to be using for um, expressing things in, in simple present or, or present continuous. Why? Because if I say, for instance, this day, okay, these days, so I'm referring to the days that are occurring uh, probably in this week. So when I say something or when I express an event that's occurring at that moment. Um, also, if I say the ex if I use the expressions today, so when I say something that has occurred today, so that's mean in present. Uh, or if I say in nowadays, now in our case, that's gonna be like a more general, but if I say nowadays, that's mean I'm gonna specify something that has occurred um, in present to you. So and we're not, we can like uh, play with um, the use of simple present, present continuous, that's depend 
uh, the purpose of my sentence or, or the purpose of my, my idea, the ones that, that I'm going to share to someone else. So is it possible to play with both? Uh, even if, if we have like, like one or another, so the, the information is gonna be the same. We say it, it well, it's gonna be uh, a little bit the same because we're referring to the present. So it doesn't matter if we use um, simple uh, present or present continuous. But if you keep the idea, it's gonna be okay. They were for verificar pues, las, la, las expresiones eh, de tiempo que, que nosotros este, eh, estamos estudiando el día de ahora. Siempre que tengamos nosotros una expresión de tiempo, ya nos da la idea de cómo vamos a continuar con la oración. Al menos la estructura gramatical, ¿verdad? Eh, me refiero a, a cómo lo construimos. Then, when I move to the future, in the, in the case of the future, the time expressions like as soon, in 20 years, uh, in the future, okay, on Christmas, even we can say on Christmas, uh, because we're going to be referring to um, an event that's going to happen um, in, well, if we are now in February, it's going to happen in, in about 11 months. Um, so th things like that, we can say, we can use expressions like that in order to express something um, in the future. So in the structure is going to be like um, the use of will, or the use of be plus going to. Or even we can use um, the ma uh, made, okay? People may buy groceries, so people made, so when I talk about probabilities there, because uh, made, it, it is true that we talk about probabilities. So when we talk uh, uh, about probabilities, we also um, uh, provide any information that's going to occur or may occur in the future. So, probabilities express ideas in the future. Nosotros tenemos esas tres opciones. En, en el futuro, utilizamos el will como un verbo auxiliar que indica es el futuro de un verbo. Um, en este caso, pues, cada vez que nosotros utilizamos este, este verbo auxiliar, el will, nosotros vamos a estar cambiando nuestro verbo a futuro. Y el verbo, a pesar de que se mantenga en su forma base, Eh, la, el significado pues, eh, va a variar para la idea que nosotros queremos expresar. Por ejemplo, si yo tengo el verbo estar, que es en su forma base, y le agrego will, ¿cómo, se, cómo lo traduciríamos nosotros? If I, if I have the verb to be, and, and if I add will at the beginning, so what, what's going to be the translation of that word in Spanish? ¿Cómo se traduciría? Yo tengo el verbo estar y le agrego will. ¿Cómo lo voy a traducir? Estará. Estará. ¿Sí? Ahora, con el verbo comprar, comprará. Con el verbo usar, usará. Y eso se va, va a depender de la conjugación que nosotros hagamos con el pronombre. Por ejemplo, si, si, si yo utilizo... Esto únicamente sucede en español. Ojo. Porque en inglés se mantiene la misma forma. Eh, verbo auxiliar más el verbo en su forma base y no cambia. En español sí depende del, del pronombre que utilicemos. Si yo utilizo yo, el verbo que voy a utilizar es usaré. Pero si utilizo él, el verbo que voy a utilizar es usará. ¿Sí? O usaremos. O usarás. Ahora, las conjugaciones, esto, esto ocurre únicamente en español. La traducción Eh, va a variar dependiendo del verbo que, de, perdón, dependiendo del pronombre que yo utilice en inglés. Uh, en inglés, cuando escribimos esta estructura, pues siempre, siempre va a ser will más el verbo to be. Fernando, veo que levantó la mano. ¿Tiene alguna pregunta? Uh, yes, you have question? My question is in English, uh, for example, I use will and later the verb. Yes, we're going to use uh, for 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 example, I use uh, I will stay. Mm -hmm. the I will stay. I will stay in my house. Okay, I will stay in my house. So you are saying that you're gonna be in your house the whole day, probably. So it's something that's going to occur. But but um, un detalle, es, o sea, cuando nosotros utilizamos esta estructura se debe mantener tal cual. Es verbo auxiliar. Y verbo en su forma base sin cambiar absolutamente nada. ¿sí? Eh, si yo tengo el verbo work, 
Simplemente le voy a agregar el will al, al, al inicio. Ahora, un detalle con el futuro es que nosotros hablamos de probabilidades, ¿sí? Eh, o de certezas, como, como le queramos llamar. Um, si nosotros utilizamos un futuro, este futuro podría o no podría suceder. Si yo digo, por ejemplo, uh, yo iré al supermercado, ¿sí? En inglés, ¿cómo, cómo diría yo esa oración? ¿Cómo eh, tra traduciría esa oración? Yo iré al, al supermercado. I will, I will go to the supermarket. I will go to the supermarket. Ajá. Pero eso es algo que yo estoy diciendo. ¿Y qué pasa si no voy? ¿Sí? Es una, pro, es una posibilidad. ¿Sí? Entonces, en el futuro siempre se, se maneja eso de probabilidades. Ahora, ¿cómo manejamos esto de las probabilidades? Porque, porque uh, cuando hablamos de probabilidades, también hablamos de certezas. ¿Qué tan seguro estoy de que voy a ir al supermercado? Si yo estoy bien seguro de, de que X cosa la voy a hacer, digamos a las 3 de la tarde, 4 de la tarde, eh, hablando siempre en futuro, digamos yo estoy en la mañana, hablo este, de algo que voy a hacer por la tarde, ¿qué tan seguro estoy de que voy a hacer eso? Ah, si no estoy muy seguro, ¿sí? si es algo que lo he pensado de momento, este, y algo podría suceder en el futuro, voy a utilizar la expresión will, que se traduciría... Eh, iré eh, eh, utilizando como ejemplo la oración anterior yo iré al supermercado yo iré al supermercado ah pero probablemente no vaya o probablemente sí es una incerteza ahora si yo estoy seguro de que voy a ir al supermercado entonces voy a utilizar la expresión eh, de be going to en el be going to nuestra certeza de realizar la acción es más alta. Siempre este, hay, hay probabilidades de que no ocurra, pero la certeza es mucho más alta. ¿Cómo se traduciría entonces este, utilizando el be going to? Siempre utilizando el verbo, de, eh, el verbo ir. Eh, la misma oración. ¿Cómo lo traducirían ustedes? Utilizando el be going to. Hola. I'm going to go. En inglés, dice. No, en español. Uh -huh. La oración, utilizando el will es, yo iré al supermercado. Pero si utilizo el be going to, en español, ¿cómo la traduciría? Voy a ir. Yo voy, voy a, ir. a ir al supermercado. ¿Se, ¿Se ve la diferencia entre uno y otro? Si sí. utilizo, yo iré al supermercado, sí. la, la incerteza de que eso ocurra es como, como un poquito más baja. Pero si yo digo... Yo voy a ir al supermercado, mi certeza es mucho más alta. Si sí, es algo que probablemente yo ya haya decidido, eh, de que una decisión que yo ya, ya haya tomado. ¿sí? Entonces, siempre, siempre es como, o se trabaja como probabilidad, pero con una certeza mucho más alta que el utilizar el will. ¿sí? Eh, podemos decirlo de la siguiente manera, entonces, que el going to es cuando nosotros eh, expresamos ideas que probablemente ya hemos planeado, ¿sí? O que estamos seguros de realizar. Ahora, la tercera expresión, eh, aquí este, trabaja eh, ya más con um, una incerteza mucho más alta, ¿sí? ¿Por qué? Porque estoy utilizando el verbo, el, sí, el verbo podría, ¿sí? In 20 years, people may buy groceries by computer. En 20 años, las personas podrían comprar golosinas por eh, computadora. Ya lo hacemos, ¿verdad? Pero cuando se, cuando este, tal vez crearon el, el libro, era como, ustedes saben, ¿verdad? La pandemia aceleró un montón de cosas este, que tal vez cuando se escribió, cuando se creó el libro, eh, se veía como un poco más, más a 20 años, más a 30 años. La, la pandemia básicamente lo que hizo fue, eh, lo que íbamos a hacer en 20 años probablemente lo aceleró y lo redujo a 5 años. <ríe> Así que este, eh, queda, queda como, como, como ahí, ¿verdad? Um, en 20 años las personas podrían comprar colosinas por computadora. 
See, so we are doing the, those things right now. So, but but there is a possibility that a new technology can occur. Uh, for instance, uh, like a delivering groceries by drones or by by I don't know these devices that that fly. So you're gonna a voice and you're gonna buy something. Well, and, and actually it's happening in, in the United States. If you, I don't know if you have seen some videos that, um, for instance, Amazon has like the, the technology that you buy something in a drone, go to your house and, and leave it there in front of your house. And, and if you buy it, uh, for instance, uh, right now, so 842, uh, probably you're gonna be receiving your uh, package from one state to another in about, uh, well, uh, now in a half or of in a half, I, I don't know. So that depends how they work. But I, I just seen some information about that. I'm not, I, I'm not be curious about uh, that, but, but I'm seeing that that's happening in the United States. So uh, we're talking about probabilities. So that, that's, that, that's the, the aim of made things that may or not occur. Yes. So, is it clear what I'm saying? Okay, turning on the air conditioning. Is it clear? So, will gonna be used for things that probably gonna occur or not. Going to be going to is gonna be for things that uh, I have decided to do, or um, I have like, uh, como una certeza de que sí va a ocurrir y el mate como eh, probabilidades, ¿sí? Probabilidades eh, de que... Una, una pregunta. Ok, mister, go ahead. Eh, por, por ejemplo, eh, be going to puede ser con un aniversario o algo muy que se sepa que yes. va a suceder sin falta. Yes, exactly. Or even if you have a date with the doctor, so you're gonna say, I'm going to visit my doctor, I'm going to visit uh, the, the hospital. So because you have a date, so uh, things that um, you have decided to do, son como cosas este, que nosotros ya hemos decidido hacer, o ya están eh, agendadas en nuestro calendario, ¿sí? Eh, eh, cosas que, que la certeza de que ocurran es mucho más alta. Si logramos de porcentaje, digamos, un, un 80% de que sí, sí va a ocurrir. Y el will es como un 50%. Um, podría y no podría, ¿sí? ¿Sí me voy a entender de esa forma? Yes, teacher, I understand the difference. A will is probably and be going to is, is exact and is impossible to change. Not impossible, but um, the, uh, the certainty of this is going to be like at the 80% because it is possible to, to that we can go. For instance, what happened if, if something occurred um, during the, the, the date and you can visit your doctor, but you have a date with him. So uh, probably it's not going to occur. In this case, the going to is like 80%. No, no le vamos a dar el 100% because we're not going to give it 100%. Eh, ¿Qué pasa si, digamos, yo tengo una, una cita con el doctor? Ah, pero yo vivo, digamos, a cinco horas donde, donde, eh, donde tengo que visitar al doctor y este, durante el día se me arruinó el carro. ¿Sí? O sea, no, no estamos seguros de que de, de, eh, en 100% de que vamos a llegar este con tiempo a, a la cita de, con el doctor. ¿Sí? Cualquier cosa podría ocurrir, por eso lo dejamos como un 80%. ¿Sí? Es más probable de que lo hagamos, porque ya está agendado, porque ya lo hemos decidido, ¿sí? pero um, este, siempre hay un, un espacio para margen de error de que no pueda ocurrir. ¿sí? No sé si... si, yes, si es, yes, estamos I, I claro? understand the difference. Ok, good. That, that's, that's wonderful. So, uh, there you have the, the each use. Uh, pass present and future. So, and even though, so if you're gonna talk about future, uh, if you notice there, we're using just affirmative sentences. Remember that uh, we can also use uh, the negative statements. 
Um, in, in case of we're gonna write in edit statement with future, what we yesterday saw the three different forms, affirmative, negative, and interrogative. So in this case, if we wanna talk about future and the, the sentence is gonna be negative. Um, I mean, it's something opposite to, to, to um, this sentence is all, the meaning of this sentence is the ones that we had here. When I use will not, uh, this one in this way, okay? Will not, so it's gonna be the opposite. Um, in English, when I find that will not, it, it, we use like um, a constructions, this word, um, and, and it is common to find this, this expression, won't. Okay, so, but the same uh, will not mean uh, the negative. So it create a, a negative uh, meaning to the verb. El, el will not crea como el, el significado opuesto negativo este, al, al verbo. ¿sí? Y el will not se puede, eh, lo, nosotros lo podemos contractar. En lugar de utilizar como will not, que es una pronunciación un poco más larga, uh, utilizamos won't won't, que es más sencillo de, de, de decirlo, más rápido, no, no más sencillo, sino más rápido de decirlo. Recuerden que este, en el inglés americano, pues, entre más rápido se hable, pues, mucho mejor. Entre más fluido lo hagamos, pues damos a entender las, las, las ideas este, lo más rápido posible. A pesar de, pues, I have... <laughs> ok. You have any question? The negative in be going to is possible. It's yes, possible it is negative. possible. But but in the, in this case, when I use like like the like, like the same rule that we use for um, the verb to be, instead of saying like for instance, I'm gonna write it here. Let, let me just write it down here. Uh, it's gonna be like um, for instance, a verb be plus not plus. Going to this way. Look at this. B plus not plus going to. For instance, people are not going to use cars even more. So eh, that's going to be in the negative. Uh, aquí en el going to es simplemente es agregar el adverbio not después del verbo to be. ¿sí? Y antes del verbo en eh, progresivo, que en este caso es el going to. ¿Sí? Es posible. Lo mismo en el, en el, de, eh, en el uso del made, de igual forma. Es simplemente agregar... A few years ago. Perdón. Es simplemente agregar el not después del auxiliar. Un segundo. Like not. That way. Okay, in 20 years, people may not buy groceries by computer. So that's, that's a probability. So we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So is it possible or not? Bien, si ¿Sí está claro. Eh, en el uso de los negativos, eh, utilizar negativos es eh, utilizar auxiliar más el adverbio not. En el caso del will, en el caso del main también es utilizar este, el auxiliar más el not. Y en el caso del going to, es utilizar el not después del verbo to be. De las tres formas del verbo to be, recuerden, es am, is, and are. ¿Sí? So, is it clear? Yes, it yes is it's clear. clear. Okay, good. wonderful. So, uh, when I've been working on some, uh, I don't know if anyone else has any question. Before moving to the activity, because I'm going to leave uh, an activity right now. Do you have any question? No? Yes? Teacher, the, the, con el will, también se puede utilizar el shall. Ah, sí, sí, correcto. <laughs> Muy buen punto. Se puede utilizar el shall para, pero, eh, Tiene el mismo significado, tiene la misma función, con la única diferencia es que eh, el show se utiliza más como en, eh, lo utiliza más en, en, en Europa, 
este, los, los británicos, ¿sí? Escucha más como short, es, es como más acentuado, este, y el uso en el inglés americano o sea, siempre tiene la misma función, siempre se puede utilizar, pero eh, prefieren mejor el will, ¿sí? Eh, y y en, eh, en Inglaterra, pues prefieren mejor el show en lugar del will. Solamente es cuestiones culturales, pero el significado es el mismo. Se utiliza de igual forma para este, expresar el futuro. Show, with. Ok, thank you. Muy bien. ¿Preguntas? How do you spell uh, show? Ah. Is H with H? It's gonna, I, I'm going to write it here. Show. That one. Okay. H, okay. I mean, S H A L L. Show. I should visit okay. my parents. I should, uh, going to, I mean, I should, uh, I should go to the supermarket, things like that. So it's gonna be like the same. I'm gonna translate it like if we do it last or like will. I mean, estaría, viajaría, trabajaría. Oh, perdón, este estaré, trabajaré. No estaba utilizando otro 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 auxiliar. Este estaré, trabajaré, estudiaré, caminaré, bailaré. Sí reiré, etcétera, etcétera. Si sí, la traducción es, es la misma en español. ¿Preguntas? ¿Más preguntas? So, you don't have any other question? No. Okay, so we're going to move. We're going to move to um, the activity that we have to solve for this, uh, the, the uses of um, these sentences. Uh, I'm going to share to you, let me stop here. I'm going to share to you a link, the same link that I've been sharing sometimes to you, games to learn English, but I'm going to focus on a different model. It says, um, let me just verify here. Um, one second. The future months, it says the future, the future. Um, what is it? Oh, here we have. I'm gonna complete this one. We're going to complete this one. Uh, okay, here. I'm sharing the link right now here in chat box so you can check it out there and go there to solve all the exercises. Um, it's the same, the same web page, Games to Learn English. Move on uh, to that place. And let's uh, share the other one. It's going to be simple, uh, present simple, or simple present. So let me just come copy and paste this information. It's going to be a simple, it's going to be a future. Sure, tense. And the other one, let me. Simple present. Okay, here you have buff link. The first one is for future tenses. The second one is the uses of simple present. Um, you're going to complete it. Uh, I guess it's gonna be like a homework and you're going to send just the screenshot um, of those activities. Lo vamos a dejar como una, una tarea. Son dos enlaces, guardenlos. Los, los resuelven eh, pues entre hoy y mañana, antes de venir a la videoconferencia, deben compartir una captura con el resultado que han obtenido. Ustedes pueden intentarlo las veces que quieran hasta sacar 100%. Can you share the link in the WhatsApp group? Yes, I will. Give me just one moment. Eso iba a pedir yo también. <laughs> I will. Yeah, give me just one moment. Okay, just let me... Uh, Login into my WhatsApp web and let me share this link to you there. You can also both, okay? 
Let me see. Okay, there you have. Uh, future tense game and also simple or uh, present simple game. Both. Ahí tenemos los dos ejercicios. ¿Ya los recibieron? A mí me parece que sí, pero no sé ustedes. Sí. Ya es teacher. Vale. Es simplemente trabajar, es practicar. De hecho, este, estos ejercicios son más prácticos que, que lo que se tiene que trabajar. Así que eh, vamos a dejarlo hasta aquí. Este, espero pues, que para el día de mañana. Yo les voy a hacer un recordatorio. De hecho, eh, mañana por la mañana para que me envíen ese, esa, esa tarea. Este, de esa manera, pues, el día de mañana ya nos podemos mover a otro tema. ¿De acuerdo? Sí. Okay, ¿Preguntas okay. antes de retirarnos? ¿No hay preguntas? ¿Dudas? ¿Sugerencias? No, teacher. No. Ok. So, uh, now you're free to leave. Um, I, I just gonna say that. Have a good, good night and also blessings to all of you. Ok? Bye bye. Good night. Bye, bye teacher. Good night. Bye. Bye. See bye. Guys. You, teacher. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye, See you tomorrow. <laughs>